Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Judges. Judges chapter number six. We might come back to Judges chapter five, uh, but the, um, that's more. Uh, uh, it's a it's a it's a, a song of praise uh, for what the Lord has done. So we're, we'll probably come back to that. But uh, just for tonight, I wanted to keep going with the the uh, with the individual judges, and, and uh, uh, so we're on to our next one here this evening. Uh, this one we will not get through today. <laughs> he's uh, he's going to take us a little bit to get through. And uh, but Judges chapter number six. Let's go ahead and, um, well, I'm going to go ahead and read here in Judges chapter 6, down through uh, verse number 1. Uh, let's see here. Uh, down through uh, verse number 10. The Bible says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. And they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude, for they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt, and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all that oppressed you, and drave them out from before you, and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. I'm going to read a few more verses here, actually. <laughs> um, let me uh, keep going here. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was an orpha, uh, that pertained unto Joash the Abizarite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all the miracles which our fathers told us of? Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? And now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee. Let's pray. Father God, I just want to ask you, Lord, to meet with us here these next few minutes. God, I need your help. I need your words to say. I need a clear mind. And uh, God, I just pray that you would uh, touch our hearts with your word. And just, God, give us what we need tonight. Lord, I know it's been a long week. It's been a long, short week. <laughs> it's been a long half week, uh, Lord. And uh, I, I know people are tired. People are uh, have burdens and, and things. And Lord, I just pray that you give us of them, give me, give all of us, Lord, something to encourage our hearts tonight, Lord, in you. In Christ's name I pray, amen. amen. So I really enjoy going through uh, these judges, you know, from Othniel, uh, our first one, to, to Ehud, uh, you know, and, and then uh, we looked at uh, that our shortest one so far, uh, Shamgar, uh, with, with uh, uh, just the um, a short verse, but boy, what a, what an impact he he made! And then uh, last uh, two weeks, we were looking at Deborah and Barak, and uh, you know what God did there for the children of Israel. And uh, but tonight, we're going to look at.
this story, uh, God records for us of Gideon. Gideon. And you know, I, tonight, I, I just want to look at, look at uh, uh, some very preliminary things this evening. Uh, kind of the first part of the first part of this, the, this, this story here that, that uh, God records for us. And, and, but I think some very valuable things that I trust will be a blessing to you. They, they were to me. Uh, just some things to keep in to keep in mind and and uh, to remember uh, and uh, to learn from the Israelites uh, to some of the things that they that they have uh, uh, that the Lord allowed them to go through. Uh, Judges chapter six and verse number one. Uh, I, I want to look here first of all tonight. I want to look at look at uh, uh, verse number one where the Bible says, "And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord." And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. You know, you, it, these first six verses give a lot of background into what happened here. Now, you know, the, it's, it's new, but it's old. It, it, you know, it's, it's just like a, a sin in our lives. Uh, you know, sin is, is different. Uh, different we we uh, have different things we all struggle with, but yet but it's all the same. It's all rebellion against God. It's all disobedience against God. God doesn't look at our sin in a, in a scale. Oh, you know, it, no, sin is sin to him. And, and you know, it's a, uh, the children of Israel, we see, you know, before we jump on them too much here, uh, you know, what uh, I I know myself t today, I could say I did evil again in the sight of the Lord. I, you know, I, 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 I sinned today. I messed up today. I, you know, it, there's a, all of us, we, we, we are sinners. Uh, we, before we point our fingers too much at the Israelites, because that's every time I, I look at it and be like, man, again they did evil in the sight of the Lord. Well, you know, what did I do? Oh, yeah, that's right. Today, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have, you, you know, it, it's a, we, we all struggle with things, but I, I think we can, there's some valuable lessons here on what we can learn from them. The, the first thing I want to see, I'm going to mention this every time it says it, the Bible says that they did evil in the sight of the Lord. You know, again, it's important to remember the thing that keeps me from sinning more than anything else is remembering that I'm sinning, that it's in the sight of God. It's in his eyes. It's not in the sight of a man. It's not in the sight of anybody else. It's in the sight of him. David said, against thee and thee only have I sinned. And he realized that his sin was, it was against God. It, it was, yes, other people were affected, but ultimately it was against God. And, you know, friend, if, if we want to, I, I think one of the, the greatest things that we can, we can do as in our Christian life is, you know, keeping those short sin accounts with, with God. First John 1 John 1.9 we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, we need that daily cleansing, uh, that daily cleansing from uh, uh, from our sin. You know, I think about, again, uh, a verse I quote all the time, but it's Psalm 119, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. You know, we need the cleansing of God's word on a daily basis basis if, if we're going to to uh, uh, um, if we're going to to live a life that's pleasing uh, to God if we're going to live a life that that's free of sin you know uh, we're never going to get there perfection will, will never happen and we're there there's never we're never going to be rid of sin but you know Lord willing five years from now we should be uh, we shouldn't be struggling with the same things that we struggled with you know, five years earlier. You know, as we as we grow in grace, you know, we should uh, God God will give us victory over those things, uh, and that should and you know it's a uh, one of those things that, that as you grow, He'll show you more things. He'll show you more and more things that that uh, to to get right and and to get right with Him. But uh, Proverbs fifteen verse three uh, uh, talks it says that the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil. Uh, that his eyes are in every place. Turn back to chapter 2 in Judges. Ch chapter 2, uh, verses 18 and 19. Notice here, God sums up the book of Judges very clearly here. In Judges 2, verses uh, 18 and 19, the Bible says, And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For a repent of the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vex them. And the Bible says in verse 19, and it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers 
in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They cease not from their own doings, nor from their stubborn way. Wow. Wow. Thinking about that, you know, that word corrupt, that word corrupt here, where the Bible says, and they uh, return and corrupted themselves. That word corrupted means decay. You know, I think about in our societies today, you know, there's a belief in talking to people, you know, that people think we're basically good <laughs> and, and that things get better. And no, that's not the case. That, that we are a depraved society. Things are going to keep getting worse and worse because of sin. We're corrupted. We're decaying. We're rotting. You know, the same thing is true. You know, you, I think it's interesting. Another good, another good uh, concept here, the Bible says they corrupt themselves more than their fathers. Notice that, you know, that decay doesn't get better over time. It gets worse. You know, the same thing is true. Just remember that what you allow in your home, in your children's home, will be at a worse state than in what it is in your home. Uh, it's a biblical principle. Uh, and decay, we see here a prime example. And more than their fathers. In the Bible, in the Bible inventories, in what ways? In following their gods. Oh boy, we see that today. The God of self. You know, how prevalent that is in society even more so than previous generations. You know, I've been thinking a lot about our country lately and, you know, and about some of the men, the service men and women and just how the brave service men and women that have given their lives and the sacrifice. And, and uh, but yet at the same time, you know, you, you hear those stories, you read those stories, they hear those things. Uh, but yet, you know, it's hard to. Be honest with you, it's hard to look around our society today uh, and think that somebody would be willing to do that nowadays. Uh, it, just because there is such a selfish society. Now I know there's people that still are, and there's people that are serving that and, and that, that would be willing to do that. But it, overall, there's there's a selfishness, um, and and the Bible says, uh, you know, serving other gods, and and the Bible says that they cease not from their own doings, nor from their stubborn. Wow, that's uh, that's a uh, you know I think uh, that's a, that's what gets us all into trouble, right? Our own doings and our stubborn way, and, and uh, that's a that's what the children of Israel. That's what would happen. God would deliver them. They would do good the day of the judges. That judge that would keep them on track, keep them pointed back to God. But you know, then when that judge would go away, when he would pass away, then they would just they would go a step further than what they had. You know, oh, how careful we need to be, you know, in, as we train the next generation uh, here in our church that, you know, it's a, uh, that it's a uh, generation that doesn't just follow mom and dad, doesn't just follow uh, uh, the, the pastor, doesn't just follow the Sunday school teacher or whoever they look up to, but they, they, they look beyond that person to the, to the God that that person follows. Uh, and, you know, that's the only way to break this cycle that's right here it is that they follow the God, not not the person, and but anyway, we see that uh, um, over and over again. But the Bible says, if you go back to Acts chapter uh, <laughs> uh, Judges chapter six, we're not two Acts. We got a long ways till we get to Acts chapter six. Uh, we got to get through chapter five yet. Uh, but anyway, uh, but if we go on here in, in Judges chapter six, uh, the Bible says uh, he delivered God delivered them into the he turned them over to the uh, Midianites for seven years. You know, I think about that in, in, you know, in Romans where you read about how the Lord turns them over uh, to a depraved, to a reprobate mind uh, because of, of, of just continually just you know, of, 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 of turning their back on, on the Lord. And, you know, I think about the Israelites and, you know, God eventually, he, he just let them have what they wanted. <laughs> he turned them over to the Midianites. And, but notice here in, in verse number two, uh, this is where it gets interesting. I mean, the Bible says the hand of Midian was uh, prevailed against Israel. Now, uh, that word prevailed, it, it's interesting. It, it, it means one of the meanings in the, the original language is to be stout. You know, and I think it, when I was thinking about something that was stout, I was kind of thinking of you know, something that uh, 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 it was firm, uh, um, settled. No, I wasn't thinking settled, but but you know that idea of something that was uh, uh, um, uh, firm, like not like a, a a wet noodle, but like a uh, like a, a 
stick or a piece of metal or something, something that was stout, that was, that was firm. And, and, but listen, hear me out here. The Bible says that, that the Midianites prevailed against Israel. And listen, listen, this is why this came to my mind. Because the next part of this verse says, And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. You know, I, in my mind, I picture the Midianites prevailing. They were stout. They were like a, 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 they were not wavering in their oppression of the Israelites. It was like a constant thing. It was a constant pressure. You know, you think about, a, 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 um, a, 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 when I think about like constant pressure, I think about lifting weights. I, 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 long time ago, I, I used to do that a little bit when I was in college and you know, it, it was a terrible feeling when you would lift that that uh, that uh, um, uh, for a bench press, lift up that that barbell and, or not barbell that uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Something uh, not uh, yeah, weights. Anyway, whatever <laughs> they you lift that bar up off the off the uh, um, where it was resting. You and you push it up and then you let it down to do a rep and. It, it would move, <laughs> and that, that's why you have a spotter, uh, so they can help you out with that. But you know, and you, you're at that point where, boy, you, you better have constant pressure, or it's going to come down on you. You got to push with all you have, and have constant pressure on that bar, uh, so it doesn't crush you. Uh, um, and you know, the Israelites, I, that's what I believe here. They were like they had constant pressure, constant pushing against them. The, the Midianites were prevailing. Against them constantly to the point the pressure was so great that what did they do? They left their homes. They went to dens in the mountains and caves and strongholds. They went and they hid. And I mean, have you ever been there before where you've had some pressure in your life? Something that that is just it, it feels like it's going to you, you have to escape it. You know, the, I mean, look in our world around us today. Look at alcohol, liquor sales, all those things, drugs. Here in Kalamazoo, you hear stories of, uh, of you know, uh, of the things that uh, go on, and and uh, um, uh, you know, you, you think about that. You know, that so those are people that are under pressure, that are trying to cope with it in some way, and we have the answer. We have we have the answer for that. But in the children of Israel, we're gonna they found the answer uh, in, here in a few verses. But notice, uh, it was it prevailed against them. Uh, it, it was. Uh, um, and notice that the Bible says, and because, because of the Midianites, what did the Israelites do? You know, it was because of them. You know, again, that pressure, I got ahead of myself. Let me, let's go back to these two words, because of. That's why they went, and they went to the dens, to the mountains, and, and the caves. You know, I, I was thinking about this. You, you know, the, the Israelites, uh, they, they no longer, God, governed their actions. They weren't following God anymore. You know, but isn't it interesting that they thought that they were going to go their own way, and now their actions were determined by their captors? You know, that's what sin does. If people think, oh, I'm free, I can do whatever, I'm, and but, you know, they're living in fear. They're living in the depression and, and, and scared, and, and their, their actions are determined by their captor, the devil. You know, fear dictated the Israelites' decisions, like we were just saying. Yeah, and I'm just reminded that the devil offers captivity, not freedom. He sells it as freedom, but it's captivity. And uh, the Israelites, that they were, they thought they could do what they wanted, and and now instead of doing what they wanted, uh, they were living in captivity to fear and and, uh, and to uh, to their captors, the Midian. Because the devil does the same thing in our society today. You know, notice the Bible says in verse 3, the Bible says, And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up from the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. When they sowed, when they sowed, you know, isn't it? I, I was thinking about that, that sowing. You know, I, I love, I still love farming. Uh, I, I love, uh, love agriculture. And, you know, we're getting not too far uh, uh, from planting seed. Uh, out here, you know, a lot of those guys sometimes if they can, they march if the ground tends to get up and some of them just some guys, it was so funny at my old job, they had to be they, it was like, they wanted to be the first person to run a planter through the field in this side of the state 
And so that, I think their pride got in the way of and caused an insurance claim later on because they had to turn those uh, turn that uh, field into crop insurance because it didn't sprout uh, and come up like it should, uh, or the frost got it uh, a week after it came up. Uh, but you know, it's sowing, uh, you know, is for a reason. It's for profit. It's to, it's to enable uh, you know a, um, a benefit for fruit. And the Bible says that when the Israelites when they would try to sow, you know, I, I think about their efforts to to survive. Their efforts to meet their need. Uh, when, whenever they would do that, the Bible says that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of, of the east, even they came up against them. You know, they came up against them. They, against what, you know, they, they came up against what their, their efforts uh, um, to succeed were directly opposed. You know, I think about that when we walk away uh, uh, from the Lord, uh, you know, the, the devil, uh, the Bible says he's as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. You know, I picture the, the Israelites, you know, that as soon as they made an effort to, uh, to, to do something, the Midianites were there. You know, the, the devil, uh, when we step away from God, start trying to do things on our own, and, you know, the, whenever we try to do something, he's going to be right there. Uh, he's going to be looking to take advantage uh, of the fact that we are, are, are no longer walking with our, our Heavenly Father. And the, the, the Midianites, they did the same thing here to the children of Israel. Uh, and um, the Bible says that they came, they came up against them. Then in verse number four, they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth. Till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep. Nor ox, nor ass. You know, they destroy the increase. Not only the increase, you know, the extra, the, the, the profitable thing, which if you walk away from God, uh, I'll be, you know, you're not going to be, uh, don't expect his blessing. Don't expect to, uh, 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 his, his, him to, uh, uh, to, to profit uh, you. The, the, don't expect the, the, those, uh, the, the increase, the, the blessing, I guess I'm trying to say. But not only that, the Bible says here, uh, and they destroyeth um, the increase of the earth, and, and then they, they left no sustenance. That word sustenance means pres preservation of life. You know, it's not only the, the increase, but also what they needed on a daily basis. They took that as well. You know, the, the devil, uh, he, uh, uh, he is a hard taskmaster. You think, you think uh, the Lord, uh, um, you know, you have a, uh, a lot of times, you know, we, uh, people want to, uh, a lot, I know today especially, there's a lot of things that are coming out with uh, the old-fashioned, uh, Bible-believing, uh, um, um, fiery preaching, fundamentalists. There's a lot of things that are coming out against them. And people saying, you know, oh, that's a, that's just that's that's old, uh, that that's old fashioned, and and uh, um, you know we don't need don't do those things like that anymore. And, and you know there's a um, there's a lot of things uh, uh, like that today uh, that are coming out. And, and um, I'm sorry, I, I completely I don't know where I was going with that. I had a really good point. But anyway, uh, uh, you know the getting back on track here. The uh, the, the Midianites they destroyed uh, the increase. They took the the sustenance. Uh, they took the preservation of life, the, the very necessity uh, that they needed. And uh, you know they were there uh, trying to, to, to take that to, and were taking that away. You know when we walk away from the Lord, uh, we can expect. Uh, we can we can expect that the the increase and the preservation are uh, you know that those things are, are going to be uh, uh, they're not going to be there like they were uh, you know the Bible says that, you know God promises to supply all of our need uh, you know but if we're not walking with Him um, you know we can't we can't uh, ex expect that uh, um, but uh, you know the Bible says. Uh, here that uh, that they took their their sustenance, but but listen, it wasn't just for them. It goes even a step further. It was also the Bible says uh, in in, uh, um, in verse number four, uh, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. It wasn't just the sustenance for Israel, but also for their animals. 
It, it affected everything. You know, sin uh, affects more people than you count on. Uh, and in this case, I know it was the animals, but, but still, you know, they weren't counting on any of this. Uh, happening. They were trying to, uh, they walked away from God. They were trying to sow whenever they would try to do something. Uh, the enemy would come against them and, and stop them. You know, they, they, they had total defeat in their lives, you could say. Even down to their very necessity, they had total defeat. And you know, when we turn our back on God and walk away from Him, you know, we can, we're, we can, we're going to experience the opposition. At every step, you know, the Bible says that His God's children, the ones He that, that are His, that they they're, they'll experience chastening when we walk away from God, because of, because we're His. You know, the children of Israel they were experiencing that they were experiencing that chastening as they walked away from the Lord. But um, notice also the Bible says here, for they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude, for both they and their camels were without number. And they entered in the, into the land to destroy it. They didn't come to take the food. They didn't come to eat the food. They didn't come to take it home to their... No, they came to destroy it. You know, I don't care what, what, uh, what lies the devil spins. That's his goal, is to destroy us as Christians. He, he wants to destroy us. And that's... You know, I think about the prodigal son. You know, the prodigal son, he had tons of friends, right? When he had all that money. We had everything, had tons of friends, and those friends, you know, what did they do? Well, like the multitude of grasshoppers, they were all there until they bled and dry, and then they left. You know, that's they, they came to destroy. They weren't his friends. They came to use him. Uh, and, you know, the devil does the same thing for us today. He, he gets us to think that, that uh, this or that and, and, uh, um, and tricks us, and his whole purpose is to destroy. But anyway, this, this is, a, I know this part's not very encouraging, but I promise it's going to get encouraging in just a second here. The Bible says, notice in verse number six, that Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. That, that, that word impoverished, it means to slacken or be feeble. You know, the, the, the world, like I've heard people say, it'll, it'll, uh, um, it'll eat you up and chew you up and, and spit you out. That's what, what, it'll, what it'll do. It'll it make you impoverished and, and feeble. But notice uh, 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 here in verse number uh, 6, the last part, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. You know, the, the point number 2 is the prophet's cry. They, the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Notice in verse number 7, and it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel. You know, what did the prophet bring? <laughs> the word of God. Yeah. You know, it, I just, it's, it's so, you, we see this all throughout scripture, but if we genuinely seek the Lord, what does he show us? He shows us his word. He shows us his truth. He shows us our air through his truth, through the word. When, when they cried, they were reminded of God's word. Notice what, because what did the prophet do? The prophet, the Bible says, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, God's words, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the God of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed. My voice. You know that God's God. It, it, when we genuinely seek Him, He's going to show us. He, he's going to remind us uh, of His word, his, of His promises. Uh, it, you know, here He recalled the past of what He did uh, with the Egyptians, and most importantly, He He reminded them, and then He sh He showed them what the the air. You know, if we genuinely seek the Lord and we listen to His voice, God's going to show us. You know, and that's a that's a pattern. It's not that shouldn't be a discouraging thing. You know, if we if we're genuinely wanting to seek the Lord and wanting to walk with Him, you know, isn't that a blessing? That it's not a question of if God will show us how to be right with Him. It's it's a He will. <laughs> we see that all throughout the Book of Judges. We see that constantly in in 
the book of Proverbs, the Bible talks about seeking the Lord with all our hearts and our soul and our mind. Uh, it talks about searching for wisdom as a as a hid treasure. And, and uh, um, let me let me just turn there because this I love this. It's, it's in Proverbs chapter two. All that go through there. I encourage you to go through Proverbs chapter two, the first seven verses, and circle all the if statements that are there. The Bible says, my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and, and lifteth up, up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. You, know, you want to know how to be right with God. You want to know how to walk with God. Well, then you, you've got to seek, seek him, not just a casual seek. I mean, I mean seek like you, you lost a million dollars. I kind of seek like you're going to turn every rock over. You're going to not going to stop looking uh, like if I lost that plate of gold that I got from Brother Ken. Now, speaking of, I do need to make sure that's a I put it in a dangerous spot. I put it in a drawer of my dresser. <laughs> and so you always think that's safe, but uh, then it turns to be a bottomless pit of, of uh, things that you lose sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, it, it, but you, get the, you know what I'm saying. You look for something, not just a casual look, but like, you know, you, you won't go to bed until you find it. That's how we're supposed to approach God's word. Uh, that's how we're supposed to approach God. The, the Bible says the children of Israel, God, when they cried, because of the Midianites, you know, again, God used those Midianites to turn their hearts back. When they did that, God, what did he do? He, he brought them his word. And he used his word to point out where they had gone, gotten off track. You know, God's word will always show us our way. You notice that, that God, you, know, you notice all the things that God said there? You know, he said, I brought you up from the land of Egypt. He said, I delivered you out of the hand of was God is not pointing them to them. He's pointing them to him. And he says, and gave you their land. And he says, I am the Lord your God. You know, and there's a, you know, that, that song that the, the, they sung at the, um, at the beginning of my dad's uh, uh, funeral service, you know, uh, Behold Our God. You know, there, there's a reason. You, know, you think about it, how it, we, we just, so often we just need to get our eyes back. You know, when we get into sin, a lot of times it's because uh, we just, we got our eyes off of him. We need to get our eyes back on our Savior. But then notice here, lastly, this, this, uh, this evening, the personal call. The personal call. We see here, and this, this is uh, the most encouraging part, in verse number 10. Or, uh, I'm sorry, verse number 11. The Bible says, And there came an angel of the Lord, and sat under an oak, which was in Orphra, uh, which pertained unto Joash, the Abbey, is he right? And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midians, Midianites. You know, first off here, looking at this 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 uh, this judge that was going to be raised up, you know, Gideon. You know what's neat about this uh, uh, this angel that came to Gideon? One commentary I was reading spoke about you know, this oak that's mentioned here, that it was a well-known oak tree. It, you know, it, and that it was. It and, you know, I was thinking about that, how, uh, again, just the way my brain works. You know, God's will, God's word is not hidden. <laughs> we, if we seek him, it's not, it's, it's there. We just have to choose to, to, uh, to listen to it. God's word is always in a well-known spot. It's always, it's not in a hidden shade tree. And the truth is there if we're willing to listen to it and, and to find it. Uh, the Bible says that, uh, notice there, that in his son Gideon, Fresh wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. You know, I was thinking about this. You know, Gideon, what, what, what was, when God spoke to him, where, where was he? Well, he was alone. You know, he was, he was alone. I think about uh, some of the, the, the men throughout the Bible that God called when they were alone. I think about Moses, first off. And, you know, Moses, I think about David, uh, spent a lot of time alone with the, with the sheep. Uh, and, and, you know, God uh, came here to Gideon when he was alone. 
But what was he doing? And he wasn't just sitting there waiting for God to speak. No, he was busy. He was threshing wheat. He was, he was doing things that he should. He was meeting the needs of his family. And he was uh, busy in, in life's uh, normal activities and, and, and consumed with that. He, he was busy doing what he should. You know, I, I think a lot of times as Christians, sometimes that we don't, uh, we get caught up in, uh, oh, I'm going to wait on the Lord, or, you know, I'm going to, I'm waiting to hear God say what he wants me to do, when we just need to get busy doing what we already know to do. <laughs> we need to, you know, stop worrying about the stuff you don't know. Just worry about the things you do know, because then when you do those things, then God will, uh, will show you what you what to do that you don't know. And with Gideon, it was something really big that he didn't, that he didn't know. Notice the Bible says, the, notice the greeting, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. It, I mean, it's really comical to think about this guy, he's threshing wheat in a wine press. <laughs> not, a, not a threshing floor, mind you, but where they would make the grape juice. I, Kind of, I think he got the wrong address. You know, he was in the wrong spot. But that was the point. It wasn't a spot they would they would think to look for him uh, threshing wheat. You know, he was industrious in that way. But uh, you know, he, he did not seem like a, as he's hiding a mighty man of valor. You know, I, this if anything encourages you tonight, I, this it blessed me as I was thinking about this. You know, I, when God called him a mighty man of valor. You know, that was a, that term for like a mighty warrior, uh, you know, for a strong warrior. And, you know, I was thinking about, I'm thankful that God sees us as we will be. You know, when you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, God sees you through the blood of Jesus Christ. He sees you as you as you will be one day in heaven, perfected and, and, and uh, without sin and without the, that old sin. And he sees you, through, he sees his son when he looks at you. You know, I was thinking about Gideon. You know, yeah, Gideon, he wasn't, he wasn't, I mean, he, he I don't know if I would have called him a mighty man of valor. But, you know, God saw what he was going to be. God saw him what he, he was going to be. I'm thankful that God, when he, when he sees us, when he saves our soul, you know, he doesn't always, he doesn't look at us through those eyes as a, as a, as a sinner. When we accept Christ as our Savior, he looks at us, he sees the perfection of Jesus Christ. Uh, that one day that we, when we get to heaven, we'll, we'll be rid of that sin nature. And I'm thankful that that's what Christ sees. And, you know, Christ also, he sees the potential uh, in us. He sees that what we can do and what he will use us to do. He sees that. And, you know, I'm thankful for that. And the Bible says, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of power. And the Bible, what does Gideon do? <laughs> Gideon says unto him, oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us. Notice that. You notice the Gideon said, the angel of the Lord said, the Lord is with thee. And Gideon, what does he come back with? He says, if the Lord be with us. You know, he's, he's talking about the whole nation of Israel. The Lord was talking about him. He said, the Lord is with you. And, but, but Gideon brings up the whole nation. He says, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all the miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. You know, I, I love that uh, God doesn't even address his statement. What does he do? The Bible says, And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? You know, Gideon's complaining and saying, You know, Lord, you're not with us. You've forsaken us. All these things. And, and basically God says, All right, I'm commissioning you, and I'm enabling you. That's what that's a, from what I was reading, trying to understand this phrase, go in this by mind. That's that's the idea behind it of I'm I'm giving you this job and I'm also enabling you to do this job. And and God sent him uh, uh, to be that mighty man of valor uh, and, and, uh, and commissioned him. You know, the Bible says that God looked, God looked on him. It, you know, I, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that. That, uh, uh, for that phrase, um, you know, God looks on you and me. Uh, the Bible says his eyes are not on the sparrow. The Bible says God knows how many hairs are on your head or lack thereof. Uh, God <laughs> says that, uh, you know, he knows, he knows our thoughts. He, he formed us. He knows those things. The Bible says that, you know, I, I just picture it. The Bible says the Lord looked upon him and he said, go in this thy might and 
thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Why? Why would, why would he be able to do that? Have not I sent thee? Have not I sent thee? You know, a promise, a promise of deliverance. Now we're gonna we're gonna see here Gideon in the next few weeks, and you know, Gideon uh, uh, he he uh, he struggled with faith a little bit there, and, and if, if this, this was really gonna happen, you know, and again, now don't we? I, I've done that before. Like you, you know, you feel the Lord tugging on your heart about something, and it's like, Lord, is that is this for sure what I should do? You know, it, it's a. I don't think. A, I think sometimes we're too hard on these Bible characters when we do the same things. We just, uh, we call them different things. So that it's, a, you know, we don't call it idolatry anymore because uh, we don't work, bow down to an idol. But, but uh, you know, our, there's plenty of, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, an idol is anything that, that takes the place more than God. That means your time. Uh, that, that means your money. Uh, look at those two things. Where they go to the most, that'll... That could be your idol. Uh, you know, it's a, uh, we have to, we have to, you know, we, we can, I think we'll learn more from these stories if we apply them to us and, and what, uh, and the things that we have going on in our lives. But, you know, tonight, I, I just, I want you to think about Gideon. I want you to think about how the Lord, the, just to, if I can encourage you tonight, you know, God saw Gideon for what he could be, for what he would wanted to use him to be. You know, when, when Jesus Christ looks at you, I don't know what you've gone through this week, but when Christ, when God looks at you, he sees his son, Jesus Christ, if you've accepted him as your Savior. And he also sees what he wants to use you to do. You know, and, uh, and you know how you can find out what he wants you to do? You can cry out to him and seek him with all your heart, and he'll show you that. Let's go ahead and pray this evening, and uh, um, I trust there's, there's a, I know we I try to break it down a lot. Uh, that and, you know, I just pray that some little piece would have been a, a something you, that would be uh, applicable or a blessing or an encouragement to you tonight. But let's go ahead and pray, and, and uh, we'll keep going with Gideon next week. Father God, thank you, Lord, for letting us look at your word tonight. God, I, I, I thank you, Lord, so much that when you see me, when you see us that trust in Christ as our Savior, you don't see the 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 guy. Uh, hiding and threshing wheat uh, in, in the in the wine press, uh, and you don't see the uh, the sin and, and the the, uh, um, the where you pulled us out of. Lord, you see your Son Jesus Christ, and Lord, uh, you see a life that you want to use to bring you honor and glory. Lord, to me that is that is a, such an encouraging thing. And uh, Lord, I pray that God, if there's anyone here tonight that is struggling maybe with that, Lord God, what do you want me to do? Lord, that like the children of Israel cried out. Lord, uh, we know your direction is in your word, and I pray that we would, uh, would seek you with all our hearts. Lord, be with us now as we spend a few minutes praying.